In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. In this manner, therefore, <coughs> pray our Father in heaven. Our Father in heaven. The Lord's Prayer that we all know by heart. I would like today, in the beginning of the Lent, to give you just two words about this prayer that the Lord Himself taught us. As you all know, when you see or when you look to the Lord's Prayer, you will find that it consists of two parts. The first part is about the person gives God dignity gives God his position, gives God whatever fitting to his divinity. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Those words relates to the position of God in my life, in our lives. His position I have to acknowledge and I have to know before giving or requesting or pleading for anything from him. To sanctify his name in my life, to ask for his kingdom and to ask for his will. And then the second part of the prayer the person or the man puts in front of God his requests. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we forgive those who are forgive our debtors. Do not lead us into temptation. Deliver us from the evil one. This arrangement of the prayer, our Lord intended to be like that. And it is very important to know how to arrange our prayers. Our Lord is the God of order. And we have to meet Him according to his order, his system. Why? Because when he taught us the Lord's Prayer, our Father, he is telling us the first thing you have to put in its position is God. God has to take the first, the priority of what you think about. Why, Lord? Why? I'm sorry for the question, but why should I put the Lord prayer to my uh, requests? 
The reason is, if we put God first and then put our needs or requests or wishes, when we put God first in the right place, in His place, in the fitting place for Him, then our needs, our requests, our wishes is going to come in the right place. Or let me put it in another way. Our requests will be correct and will be according to His will. Then we're going to win our requests. We're going to take them no matter what happened. If I put God first in my life. That is the first reason that our Lord, when He taught us this prayer, put it in this order. Don't you sometime ask yourself or ask Abuna or ask the people that you trust and say those words? I don't know if I'm requesting something right or wrong. I don't know if I should pray for this matter or not. I'm confused. If you give God priority, then your requests will be correct. That's why beware. My beloved, beware. That our prayers do not be prayers to subdue God to our will or our wishes. Rather, it's supposed to be subduing our will to His, under His. We have to say first, let your will be done, and then we request whatever we want. About our requests and our wishes and our pleas to God, you see it consists of three things, three main things. And please be careful and be attentive about the simple sentence I'm going to say about our requests to God. Those three things are we put in front of God our past, our present, and our future. Again, what we do in the Lord's Prayer, when we pray it, we are putting in front of God our past, our present, and our future. Let me tell you how. The first thing that we request from God is related to what we are in now. Give us this day, which is the present, this day, our daily bread. This is our present. And if the bread is the chief element, or the bread is the principal component of our lives, then we are putting our present in the hands of God. You are our Father. And we put our present in your hand. That is the first request. It is not merely that we're asking God, give us a piece of bread, please. 
Rather, it is more than that. I am putting my present in your hands. Do whatever you want. I'm subduing my will to your will in my present. The second thing that we ask from God is to forgive our sins. And forg forgive our sins in a sense means Lord forgive and forget our past. So we are not only putting the present in the hands of God but we asking Him even the past we're going to put it in your hand. We're going to give it to you. Why? To make efficiency the salvation that you give us. Anything wrong that we did in the past, please forgive us. So now we put our present and we put our past. The third and fourth thing that we ask from God is that we put the future in His hands. Do not allow us to go into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. Those two requests is about the future. Lord, we're asking of you, of your mercy, to save us from temptation and from the evil one, Satan. Means from Satan and whatever he wants to do for us or with us. Means I'm putting the future in your hand because it is guaranteed in your hand. So the past, you're going to forgive me. The present, you're going to give me. The future is guaranteed for me. When? When I put all of these components, the three components, in your hand. All in all means my life, past, present, future, I'm putting it in your hand. Receive my life. I'm submitting to you. Life of submission. How, how deep is the Lord's Prayer? If you think about that, in every time you say, Our Father, and every time you pray it from your heart, you are putting yourself in his hands and how many times we sin against this magnificent prayer we don't give this prayer whatever fitting for its depth when we repeat it in haste when we pray it or let me say it when when we say it with belittlement when we just open our mouth and move our lips and tongue without being alert to what we say. I am sorry to say it's a crime against the goodness of God. When he taught me how to pray and I don't follow the way that he showed me how to pray. 
That's why, my beloved, this is the guaranteed prayer. What is the meaning of guaranteed prayer? Means it's guarantee that I'm going to take what I'm asking for. Why? Because it's guarantee, it it's, is, is actually its sayer and its teacher, the first teacher that he told us is our Lord Jesus Christ. So he is the guarantee, he is the guarantor to give us whatever he told us. The only prayer that God will never, will never say no about any request of it. Why? Because it's according to his will. He's the one who told us, ask this, I'm going to give you. But are we really asking for it? Are we really praying it? Or we just, our Father, heart in heaven. That's what we all do. I am first to say that. A lot of times we, we sin against this prayer. I'm coming tired from uh, work and, uh, and uh, I'm about to sleep and I, 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 my, my conscience is, is awakened and you have to pray. Oh, okay. Our Father, heart in heaven. And I don't even finish it. I don't even finish it. Is this how... To pray the prayer that the Lord himself give you. And then we, then we come and say, the Lord doesn't listen to me. The Lord doesn't give me anything. You didn't ask in the first place. You didn't pray the right way. That's why our church, as a mother taught us that we have to start and end anything in our lives with this prayer. Why? It's a guaranteed prayer. Do not just pray and that's it. It's good. It's good to, to talk to God. But you have to start and you have to end with what he told you to say in your prayer. I'm not saying this is the only prayer. I'm saying it has to be the first and the end. I mean, sorry, the beginning and the end of any prayer that you're going to pray. If any request, even if you talk to God, even if you contemplate about his majesty, you have to start with this and you have to end with it. But why the church told us to start with it and to end our prayers with it? The church wants you to understand a very, very important thing. What is this? That we, when you enter into your room or into the prayer room, which is your heart, you are entering to be in front of your father. Abba, Daddy, I'm going to my father to ask him something. That's why our Lord said the first word you have to utter is our father. That's why when you enter to pray, you are entering as a son. And you have the joy of a son going to meet his father and asking him for anything and everything that he wants. How joyful it is. Remember when you were young or the young people in here? When they have in their mind, for example, um, I want next feast, I want an Xbox. Or I want a um, motorcycle. I'm sorry, no, no. 
Uh, we want a car. How you feel when you are going to ask your dad to give you what you want and you are guaranteed that you're going to get it. Im imagine the joy that you are going to be. And this is a materialistic thing. Imagine that instead of your earthly father, you're going to meet your heavenly father as a son. And you're going to request heavenly spiritual things that beyond your mind. Your father will never give you something bad. Your father will never refuse to give you something for your benefit. Never. If you ask according to his will, which is the goodness of God, you're going to get it. And also when you are going out of prayer, the church te teach us or taught us to pray again, our Father. Why? Because the church wants us to remember when you go out from the presence of God to your daily life, you still having a Father in heaven and you are a son. Even if I am in war at work, yes, you're still his son. Even if I am uh, busy with something, yes, you're still his son and he's your father. You're not going to lose that. So at the end of the prayer, the church wants you to remember, st you're still a son. Don't worry from anything. But don't think about anything. The feeling of sonship and the fatherhood of God. It is not a slave with his master anymore. It is not a creation with the creator anymore. It is more than that. It is a son with his own father. You remember in Isaiah 1, God is rebuking the people of Israel. And he told them, I had raised sons, but they stood against me. And then he returned in Malachi first, in Malachi 1, and also said to them, If I am a, a father, if I am a father, where is my honor? Then Christ came in the New Testament and taught us this prayer that we have to start with the word, Our Father. And by saying our Father every time, we honor Him, the true Father. Lord, if the people of Israel in the Old Testament stood against you, we're going st gonna to stand in front of you requesting your will, be submissive to you, and we're going to be your sons. It is very beautiful for any of us to enjoy the meaning of the words of the Lord's Prayer. The, th the second word I want to give about the Lord's Prayer is the word, our Father. You notice that when our Lord taught the disciples this prayer and they transfer the prayer to us in order to learn it he start with the plural our father 
He didn't say when you pray, say my father in heaven or my father who art in heaven. He said you have to pray saying our father. Okay, I'm going to say our father because I'm in church and the people around me are my brothers. So we're going to say our father. But what about in my own room alone? Can I say my father? The church says no. Christ said no. Don't address me with my father. Why? I'm only one. He taught us, you have to say our father. Why? Because he wants to say to us, if you really mean that I am your father as a person, so in your sonship to me, you have to gather, to appreciate, to take you to your bosom with you when you come to meet me, your brothers and sisters. You have to take them with you, either by physical presence or in my heart and my mind in front of God. What this mean, again, this mean that in order for me to have the right of sonship, I have to fulfill the right of brotherhood. Danny? Again. In order for me to be a son for the Heavenly Father, I have first to acknowledge To take into consideration, to gather, to take them into my heart and my mind, my brothers and sister with me. Every single time I am in front of God. To remember every time when you utter our Father that you have brothers and sisters. In need to be with you in front of the Heavenly Father. So you have responsibility in front of God about your brothers and sisters. And that's what we call or the church call the sacrament of the brother. The sacrament of the brother. What is the sacrament of the brother? It is very obvious that no one, no one can enter the kingdom of God except with this sacrament of brother. It is very clear if you go back and read the story of Joseph and his brothers. The sacrament of the brother is, consists of three words. I'm sorry, three actions. In order to fulfill this sacrament in your life and go to the kingdom of God, there is three things you have to do. Number one, love number two forgiveness number three service all this to your brother in humanity without this three components i'm sorry to say if you are uh, a miracle doer you are not gonna go to heaven if you forget your brother, God will ask you, 
Where is your brother? Why you come to me without him or without her? See how crucial it is? My kingdom depend on my brother and my sister? Yes. I thought it depends about my relation to God only. Yes. But if your relation with God is true, you will never forget your brother. Because God is love. And God is forgiveness. And God serves us. Please be attentive to that. The sacrament of the brother. So many times we forget about it. So many times we don't want to achieve it. I cannot be a son to the father except with my brothers and sisters. Love, forgiveness, and service. By the way, this is not my, my words. This is the Bible. This is the life of Jesus Christ. And you know very well, if we live according to his life, we're going to be in the kingdom. St. John said, by this we know that we are moved from death to life. If we huh, love the brethren. Hold on a second. No, no, no. I'm sorry, St. John. We moved from death to life by the resurrection of our Lord. He said, not only the resurrection. But by the love that Christ, when he was risen, he has in his heart to his brethren. Otherwise, Christ would, risen from, would be risen from the death and we still in death. If he don't love us. And that's why we cannot rise from our death into the life without loving the brethren. Forgiveness. If you do not forgive the people their trespasses, your Father in heaven will not forgive you. That's the Bible. It's not me. Love. Forgiveness. Service. Lord, when we did, uh, Lord, we want to serve you. That's good. But at the, la the last day, he came to the, pe to the people in front of him and asked them, I was hungry and you fed me. I was thirsty and you uh, give me to drink. Then the people asked him, when? We didn't see you. Everything that you did to my brethren, you did to me. So every service you do to your brothers and sisters, you're doing to God himself. That's the sacrament of the brother. Our father. Do not be dismayed and, and feel bored that every time you have to pray with the plural sense. No, I want to talk to God personally. That's fine. That's fine. But remember, your brothers and sisters have to be in the prayers also. Even if they are not physically there. You have to carry them in your heart. And put them in front of God. Otherwise, you don't have love. Otherwise... You don't have forgiveness. Oh, I don't stand this person. I can't even think about this person. I don't want to talk to him or her. What about in the prayer? If you have the same feeling, I'm sorry, your prayers are not accepted. The sacrament of the brother, our father, our father. That's why, my beloved, I told you in the beginning, when you pray this prayer, it carries a lot of meanings. 
And sorry to say, we pass all of this, we lose all of this because we don't know the meaning or we don't think about the meaning or we don't meditate about what we're saying to God. The sacrament of the brother. My beloved, in the beginning of the Lent, I want to request from you, not me personally, but the church. In the Lent, you notice that all, most of the hymns of the church and the prayers of the church is about to remember the needy and the brethren. So don't forget the brethren. Not only what we call the brethren of the Lord who are in need, but even the people who are around you. Even the people that you don't know. Even the people that have enmity against you. Even the people who try to harm you. Please. Take them in your heart. And when you stand in front of our Father, remember them and me and us in your prayers. That is the meaning of the sacrament of the brother. Glory be to God forever and ever. Amen.